Hello there friends and welcome. This is a guide for a shield and sword, well more like shield and spear character. Probably one of the easiest ways you have of playing the game, because it is so simple yet so very effective. You can easily get not only infinite blocking by making all of your block attempts cost zero stamina so you don't lose any stamina on blocking, no matter how dangerous or big the enemy is or how hard they hit you, while at the same time poking them from distance with your spear so you get to combine both very high defenses with great offenses too, for a very solid character. And as usual with all of my other guides, you can get this character going very early in the game at the very beginning, to help you go through all of the open world areas with ease. So without further ado, let's get started, first by explaining how some of the mechanics behind shield blocking and also attacking while holding your shield work, and the starter class selection and keepsake too. So as far as class, be sure to go with Vagabond, you have very solid stats overall, especially Vigor, Endurance, Strength and Dexterity. And you also already start with a decent 100% Physical Negate shield. As for Keepsake, the Golden Seed as usual, for the extra flask charge during the early game, which is very helpful. Alright, so every shield has a guard boost value. The higher it is, the less stamina you spend whenever blocking the enemy's attacks. The fun part is, this appears to be percentile based. So if you manage to reach 100 guard boost, blocking the enemy's attacks won't cost you a single point of stamina. So you have what is pretty much infinite blocking. And it is what our build will get very soon. Second, whenever you block the enemy's attacks with your shields, you will negate the damage based on a percentile equal to the corresponding value. For example, my shield here has 100% physical damage negation, so I won't take any physical damage. Meanwhile, as far as the elemental and magical damage, I will still take a little bit of damage. Some enemies have attacks that are split between physical and magic or elemental, so you'll still take just a little bit of damage when blocking them. And there are ways to increase this further, as I will show you in this guide. Second, let's talk about guard counters. Whenever you successfully block an enemy's attacks, if you attack with your heavy attack, you'll perform a guard counter. Notice the little sounds that will come right after I counter-attack the enemy when blocking their hit. Guard counters are not only a way to deal very high damage, but also to break the enemy's guard, so they will fall down and you get a critical hit on them. Last but not least, you can actually attack while holding your shield, so long as you have a trusting weapon. You just have to keep your shield button pressed, but it has to be a light attack. Just like this. Notice, like I said, it has to be your light attack. If you use your heavy attack with your shield up... See, I took my shield off and then attempted to attack the enemy. So only do this with light attacks. For this guy, they have chosen spears because of their high damage and range. But since rapiers are also trusting weapons, you can also attack from behind your shield with them. So with that out of the way, let's talk now about how to get our very first powerful shield and also spear weapons. For a spear, we are going with the Cross Naginata. It's actually very simple to find, has pretty decent range, and you can still use it to slash at the enemies with a different moveset, instead of thrusting if you don't have your shield up. So very versatile. Lastly, it even comes with bleed damage on hit, perfect for generating blood loss. To find it, you'll start from the Rotview Balcony race, which is one of the first in the Kaelid region, so taking the starter area as a reference point, you go northeast, past Summon Water Village, until you reach Rotteview Balcony. Now we'll want to head to this little cave here that I have marked. You can drop here first, then just keep going right where my marker is. Drop down here again. And here we are, the Gael Tunnel. Now to get to where the spear is, first drop here, then here, and now finally here to the grace. Now let's keep going ahead. Ignore the enemies here, and go right for this little entrance to the right, with the small octopus enemies. The Cross Naginata will be right at the corpse here. You'll probably die from the octopus enemies, but we already have our weapon. You'll also have to exit the cave, so if you die from the cave grace, 
just keep going right ahead because our teleportation ability is blocked while inside. Go past the enemies. The exit is pretty close. Then right ahead, drop down here. Then straight ahead. And just go right ahead. If you want to fight the boss, you can just go to the big doors there to the right, but I don't recommend you do it at the beginning of the game. As for a shield, you want to start with the Great Turtle Shell. Not only because it is super simple to get, but also it already comes with the Barricade Shield skill. This is what will later allow us to get 100% guard boost for zero stamina cost. With this shield you won't be 100%, but you already get the skill for free to help us actually get the Ash of War later on, as to apply it to other more powerful shields. From the Castle Morn Rampart Grace, which is to the southeast of the starter area, you just have to follow the main road here and go down past the Bridge of Sacrifice and you'll soon reach this area. Mount your horse and right next to the Grace here, you can see a Spirit Spring. Jump and go right over here to this Rampart. And that's all there is to it. Loot this corpse right here and there we go, the Great Turtle Shell. Now that we have our Turtle Shield, we can finally defeat the boss that is needed to get the Ash of War Barricade Shield ability, so we can apply it to other shields instead of just the Turtle Shell. Barricade Shield will increase the guard boost of your shield by 35, so as long as you have a shield with at the very least 65 guard boost, it will then become 100 for no stamina cost at all when blocking attacks. Casting it is very fast, and it will cause your shield to glow. After some time has passed, it doesn't have that high duration, but it is often long enough because the FP cost is very low. Once your shield stops glowing, the effect will have worn off, so you have to cast it again. The good thing is, even as you cast it, you already raise your shield, so you can keep it up right after that. What I mean is, even by just casting it, you already block an enemy attack. Now to get our barricade shield, Ash of War, Head to the Castle Morn Rampart Grace, which you already unlocked for the Turtle Shield anyways. And then pass time until it is nightfall. Because the boss we have to fight will only spawn during night. And there we are, we can already see the Knight's Cavalry patrolling the road there. Don't forget to turn your Barricade Shield on and always keep your shield up as well. Avoid the Horse Stomp by moving to the side. Don't forget, you can always safely poke from behind your shield by just keeping your shield up. You'll soon get the hang of it, no doubt. And there we go, the knight fell, and we can get a critical hit to finish him off. And here we are, the Ash of War Barricade Shield. So now the fun can really start. We can finally start farming. The best of the early shields in the game, the Eclipse Crest Great Shield. This shield will start at 63 guard boost, but by enchanting it to plus 6, it will become 65, which is great because when you combine it with Barricade Shield, it will become 100%, so no stamina cost when blocking. It has 100% physical negation, pretty high magic negation at 72, and decent elemental negation as well. Also, this shield has a hidden effect of increasing your resistance, so immunity, robustness and focus by 50, which is pretty great. After all, you can still get hit with status effects even when blocking hits like poison, bleed and so on, and this will increase our resistances against that. Getting this shield is also simple, because it drops from an enemy right ahead of me here that is very farmable. While hunting for the shield, this enemy can also drop the entire mausoleum set, so Mausoleum Armor, Gauntlets and Greaves, which are a very nice upgrade over your starter armor pieces, so it's basically a win-win situation. Alright, so the enemy you have to fight for this shield is right here at the entrance to the Black Knife Catacombs area, in the Liurnia of the Lakes region, pretty much on the northern end of it. Getting there is pretty simple too, you don't actually have to go to Stormvale Castle, remember, you can always go to the Broken Bridge here north of the Stormhill Shack, go down the Broken Bridge, then up the cliffs, and it will also lead you to the first grace of the region, the Lake Facing Cliffs. After that, drop the stone steps until you reach the lake section, and then it's just a matter of going north all of the way until you reach this grace here, then follow the road around for this little section of the road, 
then head northeast, and the Black Knife Catacombs will be at the end of it. Right as you come in, you, you already see the Headless Knights, they are guarding the entrance. I recommend you just skip him and go right into the Catacombs because there will be a Grace right here, so rest at it or at least at activate it so if you die you already spawn here. This is what makes farming it so easy, the enemy is right next to a Grace, like 5 seconds away from it. From the Black Knife Catacomb entrance you want to sneak around to get a free backstab for huge damage at the start of the battle, activate Barricade Shield, Block his attack once, counter with a heavy strike, block again, another counter. He already fell down from his guard break, get a critical hit, and just finish him off with a poke. Go back to the grace, rest, and repeat. Now that we have a very powerful shield, set of armor, and also the barricade shield, all we have to do is enhance the power of our cross Naginata spear even further. For that, we are going with the Ice Spear Ash of War to add Frost build up on our hits. Remember that the Naginata already has Bleed by default, so now we get both Frost and Bleed at the same time, which really enhances our Shield and Poke style, because we'll be attacking a lot while blocking the enemy hits all at the same time. Frost can cause a pretty nasty debuff, not only making the enemy lose hit points just like Bleed, but also even decrease their defenses. And to get our Ice Spear Ash of War, Go to the Gate Strown Bridge, Grace, right here in Yernia of the Lakes. And as usual, we'll have to fight another Night Cavalry boss. So pass time until it is night. Go north along the way. And you can already see him on his horse there in the distance. At this point, he shouldn't really be hard. You can just turtle behind your shield as usual. Just like this. And he can't really do much. And there we go. With all that out of the way, there is actually a last piece of gear and also a spell that will really help our shield character. The Scholar Shield spell. This will enhance our shield's magic and elemental damage negation by quite a lot, which is perfect because we then get not only 100% physical negation, but also the ability to avoid most of the enemy's magical and elemental blows. It also has a very high duration of 1 minute, so perfect against bosses and other tough foes. You can easily buy the Scholar Shield spell from the NPC Selen right here in the Waypoint Ruins. As I've already explained in my Beginner's Intelligence Caster Guide linked to the side here. Now because this is a sorcery, you will also need to have a staff to cast it. I like going with the Demi-Human Queen staff because you can get it very early and it also has a very low intelligence cost of just 10. To get the staff, all you have to do is defeat the Demi-Human Queen right here in the Demi-Human Forest Ruins area. So, from the Castle Mon Ramparts Grace, simply head northwest and you easily reach it. Now, when it comes to gear and talismans for your shield character, for the helmet, I like just keeping it simple and still retaining the Vagabond Knight helm for the early game. And as far as the other pieces of armor, like I said, you can go with the Mausoleum set because you will gain it while farming or Eclipse Crest Great Shield. When it comes to talismans, the slots are very important. The first, as usual, is Red Dragon Source Seal to increase all of our physical stats by plus 5. Finding it is very simple and I already have a guide link to the side here on how you can get it even at the very start of the game. Second, because we are a shield character with a spear, we can also make use of the very powerful spear talisman which increases the power of our spear counterattack. By counterattacks, it means when you attack the enemy while the enemy is also in doing his own attack animation, which is very easy to do because we can just hold our shield up and start attacking the enemy. Some of these attacks will no doubt hit the enemy while they are also attacking for the bonus damage. To find this talisman, head right here to the Lakeside Crystal Cave in the Lyurnia of the Lakes region, and from the Scenic Isle of Grace, simply head south and you'll soon reach the cave entrance right in this part of the map here. It is a dark place, so be sure to go with a lantern. Careful with the enemy ambush here. You want to keep going right ahead past all of the annoying demi-human enemies. And then open this chest right here. And there we go, spear talisman, just what we needed. 
Now let's talk about attribute point allocation for our shield character. Your very first point should go into dexterity, so you can get 15. That's because the cross Nagnata spear requires 20. The other plus 5 points we can get from the Red Dagon's talisman. After that, you definitely want to focus on strength until 27. Once again, because of the talisman that gives plus 5, it will become 32. And 32 is enough to wield our Eclipse Great Crest shield. I also recommend you then increase your intelligence by 3 points from 9 to 12. This is so we can cast the spell Magic Shield. The last of the points for the start of the game can go in Vigor for more hit points, which even for a tanky character like us is still useful because you know, you are most likely going to make mistakes, it's normal, the game is very fast paced and quite unforgiving. The more hit points you have, well, the more mistakes you are also allowed to make while not dying. After all of this, you can also eventually start increasing your endurance to give you not only more stamina for even more shield hooks with our spear, but also to increase your equipment load. Although honestly, the slow brawl isn't really an issue for us because, well, we can just block all of the enemy's attacks at no cost. Now let's do a section on how to properly play the build. This can go in two different ways, so first, of course, always turn your barricade shield on. Now, if the enemy attacks you and gets staggered after you block his hit, like the enemy here, go for a guard counter. Eventually they will break their guard and you can get a critical hit on them. So the attack gets staggered and you go for a heavy attack, which means a guard counter. You cannot counter with a light attack. It has to be a heavy attack. Second, if the enemy you're fighting does not stagger when you block their attack, usually bosses and other big enemies, this means they will keep doing their combo after you block, so ideally you don't want to go for a guard counter, otherwise you will get hit and take damage. What you want to do for these enemies is the classic spear poke with the shield, so hold your shield up and start poking at the enemy. This way, no matter how long their combo is, you just keep on striking with your spear while remaining safe. I don't say fully safe, because there are actually two different ways that you can still get hit even when having your shield up. The first comes from attacks that hit all around you. Remember that you can only block attacks that come from the front with your shield. After all, you don't have a shield on your sides or your back. So if the enemy flanks you or has area of effect attacks that hit an entire area, like for example Dragon Breath, your shield won't really block everything. Last but not least, grab attacks also cannot be blocked by shields, so be careful. Although as a whole, block attacks tend to be some of the most telegraphed attacks so they are somewhat easy to avoid by just rolling, even with the fat slow roll. With all that out of the way, I hope I've managed to properly explain to you just how powerful a shoot character can be in Elden Ring. Certainly makes for one of the easiest and smoothest builds you could possibly want. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends!